Hi my friends, Volcano Hoppers here. As promised, I am back with another book report. I have just finished an incredible book that was just released a few weeks ago and I'm so excited that this book has come out. So I was talking to you a little bit about Mount St. Helens in the last video and about how the eruption in 1980 kind of changed the face of volcanology as we know it. This explosive and acidic volcano that was totally different than anything else we'd ever experienced in the United States decided to explode in this tremendous lateral blast, ended up killing 57 people and injuring dozens more, and just reshaping the entire landscape of what we knew about volcanoes. There has been so much study studying done about Mount St. Helens in the last 39 years because of that eruption. It's just tremendous what we know now and what we think we know about volcanic eruptions and how we can potentially forecast future ones. That is not an easy job, by the way. It's kind of like forecasting a tornado. You never know <laughs> when that's going to happen. But this book just came out by Melanie Holmes. It's called A Hero on Mount St. Helens, and it's the life and legacy of David Johnston. Now, I briefly mentioned David in my last video. David was a volcanologist, and he was one of my role models growing up. I absolutely adored him and his work. He was brilliant. He was a brilliant volcanologist. He had great ideas about how things worked and new ideas and fresh thoughts about how all these components come together to make a volcanic eruption happen. And he was probably one of the bravest bravest volcanologists I've ever heard of. He was not afraid to go running, running, because he loved to run, <laughs> into a crater to collect gas samples, which he was one of his focuses, was gas studies. He would walk right up to a volcano and try to keep as safe as possible while introducing himself and learning more about it. So in 1980, of course, he was at Mount St. Helens and he stayed at this camp called Cold Water Two. It was about five, five and a half miles from the volcano on the north side, and that was his station. And he was going to stay there and learn about the volcano, watch the volcano. And unfortunately, when the volcano went off at 8.32 on May 18th, Sunday morning, he was right in line with that blast and he was killed immediately. David was never found. The camper that he was in was discovered later after the eruption and some, some of his belongings, but he never was. And it's a heartbreaking loss. It's very tragic to lose anybody, but definitely to have such a brilliant scientist lose his life at age 30, it's heartbreaking. But at the same time, you always want to say, you know, he died doing what he loved. And it's true, he died doing what he loved. I have to say, if I have a choice of the way I go, I want it to be doing something I love. But David's legacy was something just so incredible. Because of his research leading up to the Mount St. Helens eruption, and because of his daring and bravery to go collect these samples from this mountain that nobody knew what it was going to do, we have so many new systems in place. We have a observatory up in the Cascades that didn't exist before that eruption. There's also an observatory now on what's called Johnston Ridge. It's the cold water ridge where he was stationed. And we have more advanced warning. We have more advanced knowledge about the volcano and how it's going to behave and perhaps we can predict future eruptions. So this book was really cool because I had always wanted to learn more about David, my role model, and what his life was like, what it was like growing up, who his family was, what inspired him to get into volcanology, and what his experience as a volcanologist was. He was only alive 30 short years, but in those 30 short years, boy was it action packed. He survived. An incredible tornado which growing up in Tornado Alley the next state over from where he grew up I know exactly what this is like and it showed from an early age he wasn't afraid of nature or natural disasters or anything like that he grew up he loved photojournalism he loved to write which is really cool because hey I love to write I love taking photos I love photojournalism myself so he was kind of shy, kind of quiet, you know, maybe the nerdy type a little bit. 
And I feel like I bond with him because I feel like we have very similar personalities. And unfortunately, I never got to know him, but I think, I like to think we would have been friends. Um, but David, halfway through college, the University of Illinois got into geology. He had to take a geology course as an elective and it hooked him. And I remember this feeling because I had to take a geology course in school when I was a lot younger. And it hooked me because I remember opening the book and seeing this fabulous shot of Mauna Loa with the lava running down the slopes and it just hooked me immediately. I was in love. So I imagine he felt the same way. He changed his degree to geology, went to the University of Washington and got his volcanology degree and PhD. But David was the type of person who never wanted to be called Dr. Johnston. You know, he was very humble, humble person and very kind, I think, um, from what I know of him. But he went to Augustine Volcano in Alaska and narrowly escaped a brush with a volcano up there. Um, incredible stories about his trips to Alaska, about his trips to St. Helens and to the summit there and his hikes around there. Um, but very, very well written, a very incredible story. So I'm very, very grateful to Melanie for taking the time to do all the research and write this story because I feel so much closer to this person who I never got to know or got to meet, um, but that I've looked up to all my life. So shout out to Melanie and shout out to David's family who was very kind enough to share all this information with her and share his stories and his personality and by sharing with her sharing with the world so it means a lot thank you so much to Pat his sister and his his nieces and nephews so um, I just wanted to share this book with you <laughs> it kind of tears me up a little bit just because of the story behind it and I hope you'll pick it up, hope you'll read it. It's available in the bookstores now. It just came out a few weeks ago, but take a look. Maybe you'll get to know, get to know some um, things about the volcano, some things about a person maybe you didn't know about. So in the meantime, I hope you enjoy reading. I'm about to go stick my nose in another book and learn some more about the Pacific Northwest and its volcanoes. So have a wonderful evening and happy hopping.